So this time on the channel, we're going to breathe new life into an old vintage Turner microphone. So this was a ham fest item. I bought this probably 25 years ago and threw it in a box because it had a dynamic element in it and it was non-amplified and I just didn't like it. You can find these desk mics at ham fest. There's a, another example. This is a Turner Plus 2 SSB that the ceramic element was bad and I put a dynamic element in it and modified the circuit board so that it would work. And this, this is an original all stock Turner plus two SSB and this one works. This is one of my main microphones. So turn these Turner mics were made in the late 60s, early 70s, and they're quite collectible. And if I can do what I would like to do with this microphone, which is convert it to an electric condenser element. These are very cheap. I bought a 10 pack on Amazon for about $6. So if I make a mistake and kill a few, no worries. But I'm going to put that electric condenser element inside of this microphone. I'm going to wire it to the phantom power coming out of the Yezu radio. So there will be no battery and no electronics inside the mic. Well, very few electronics anyway. And the nice thing about Yezu radios is, so Yezu uses an 8-pin modular plug. And you can take an old cat find a cable and just whack it in half and use that as a mic cord. You don't want to make it too long because there isn't real good shielding in this. But if you keep it short, these wires are twisted, so there is some shielding provided by that. So let's go over to the bench and set this up and we'll see if we can get it done. I really wanted to make this video much sooner, but I lost my feet. I know that's not some deep philosophical statement. I actually lost the feet to the mic base and I had to search for them and I found them finally. But anyway, um, these Turner mics are kind of cool because in the beginning the Turner microphones were not amplified as I mentioned earlier. So they had the feet without this little shim. And then when they converted to an amplified base or an amplified mic, and the first ones had the circuit board up in the neck. And they had to put the 9-volt battery on the bottom of it. Well, the 9-volt battery was thick enough that they had to add these little spacers. So, quick way to tell if, if it's an original amplified mic or not. It'll have these spacers on it. So, I found my feet. And the first thing I had to do was pull this mic cord off, the old mic cord. So this is actually kind of a nice mic cord. I'm going to save this for another project. Is it five wire? Let's see. One, two, no, it's only four, but still. It could come in handy for some other project. So we'll set that aside. And we'll set this aside. Now the first thing that I did is I used an ohmmeter to pin out these cables because from what I found there isn't really a standard on this stuff. So just put something sharp on the ohmmeter clip and I got down in here and I just pinned out all these wires to find out where they go because in the radio this will be pin one, two, three, four, going down to eight. And this is what I came up with. So pin one, orange, white, pin two, orange. Right off the bat we don't need those because there will be you no know, up down in this mic. So orange, orange, white. So I'm going to cut those Okay, green, white is the third pin down, which is going to be 5 volts coming out of the radio. This one, right here. So we'll leave that. Blue is mic ground. Blue, white is mic. So luckily, when I'm using phantom power out of the radio, I don't have to worry about switching power to a circuit board in the microphone, like you would have to worry about if you were using a 9 volt battery. So if this were a, a bog standard Turner Plus 2, we'd have to switch power to and away from the circuit board whenever uh, we were keying up and unkeying the radio. Otherwise, the 9-volt battery would go dead in short order because it would be on all the time. So that's not going to work. 
So with phantom power, we don't have to worry about that because with phantom power, we can leave the mic element on all the time because it's consuming very, very little current. It's not going to harm a thing. And in any modern ham radio, there's an advantage if your radio has Vox with it unkey, but with the mic element powered up, you can engage the Vox in the radio without keying the microphone. So plus plus simplifies the wiring, so I'm going to have to worry about that. And it also allows us to use Vox in the radio. Now, the first thing we have to do in that case is I need to find two pins in the mic base that when I press down the key bar, short out. So we'll bring over the vintage Micronta Radio Shack meter. And all I'm going to do is find two pins that when I push down, gives me a dead short. So it's going to be the bottom two pins that I'm going to use to key the radio. And that's the only thing that we need as far as switching on this microphone. And I've made this little circuit board and it has a few components on it. So this is just a generic universal circuit board that I've trimmed to size because it's going to have to fit inside the neck or inside the head of the mic. And then I've soldered our condenser mic element, a 10k ohm resistor. This is going to be our bias power. So the 5 volt is going to hook to this and then coming out of this 10k resistor will power up the mic element. And then this capacitor just prevents DC from getting into the mic circuit. So it's just filtering out any DC that might be coming out of this mic element. So this circuit board looks like this. We have our mic cartridge. We have our positive coming out of the mic cartridge. And then we have an electrolyte capacitor. And that goes to the radio. And then further down, we have our 10K ohm resistor. And that goes to 5 volts in the radio. The ground side is even simpler. It just goes to the radio. So this is mic ground, and that's it. PTT ground and PTT need to go to the green wires and the brown white wires in the connector. So green, brown, white is going to go to the two pins that I owned out earlier. And then I'm going to run it over to the radio and just test it real quick. Okay, that part works. So we can set this aside for now. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to solder my leads to my circuit board. So we have three wires going to the circuit board. There's 5 volt power, which I'll use orange. There's ground, which I'll use brown. And there's mic audio, which I'm going to use blue. So the 5 volt power is going to go in right at the base of this resistor. So right on this tab right here. And ground is the other pigtail pin coming out of the condenser mic. And then our audio out circuit is going to be the one that comes out of our 2.2 microfarad capacitor.
Okay, we'll start with the 5 volt circuit. Which is the orange lead going up to the circuit board. And that needs to go to green white. And next I think we'll do mic ground, just the brown wire coming off the circuit board and the blue wire going into the radio. And last but not least, we will wire the white blue wire coming out of the radio to the mic. Sometimes you have to slide these bases around to get them to work correctly. Looks like we're good. As far as the mic element itself, I'm just going to cushion it with some foam. Like so. And let's see if it works. So to start with, I'm just going to make a recording and make sure this thing sounds good before I attempt to use it on the air. Testing one, two, three, testing one, two, three, testing a modified Turner Plus 2 microphone with an electric condenser microphone element. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three, testing one, two, three, testing a modified Turner Plus 2 microphone with an electric condenser microphone element. Testing one, two, three. So far, so good. Okay, and to finish out this video, I'm going to give you an audio test or an audio sample of all three of these microphones that I have here. So this is the original stock Turner, uh, Turner Plus 2 single sideband microphone. Now, there were two different styles of these mics. So this mic, this mic has the original circuit board. It's up in the neck. It has two transistors in it. So that was the original setup on these microphones was the circuit board of the neck. 
And then later on they changed and they went to a circuit board that's actually attached to the ceramic element up in the head. And that one has a Darlington transistor on it. So let's listen to that one first. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Stock. Turner plus two SSB microphone. Completely stock. That was microphone number one. And here's the one that I modified with a dynamic element. I had to go in and change some of the resistors on the board and added a 2.2 microfarad electrolyte capacitor between the dynamic element and the audio portion of the circuit board. And this is what this one sounds like. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Turn to plus two microphone with a dy dynamic element and a modified circuit board. Testing one, two, three. And then last but not least is the microphone we just got done with, with an electret condenser mic element and uh, using phantom power from a radio. Testing one, two, three, testing one, two, three, testing a modified Turner plus two microphone with an electric condenser microphone element. Testing one, two, three. So there you go. So what's nice about this is, you know, this original microphone with the ceramic element these ceramic elements are fragile. So if you bump the microphone, drop it or something like that, you can actually ruin the ceramic element in the mic. That's why I want to have backup microphones that I can use because, for instance, if I do a portable activation, I don't want to be taking that microphone. So I have two choices now. I have this microphone that I just got done with, with the electric condenser element. And then I also have this one with a dynamic element, and they both sound pretty good. So what do you think about that? Leave comments below, and thanks for watching.